What's going on, Sim Races? This is Larry TJ or Sim here, and today I wanted to talk about how do you know when to move up to a higher Newton meter wheelbase? I was posing this question to myself when I had picked up the Sim Magic Ultimates in this GT Neo rim, and I had to justify like, do I really need 23 Newton meters of force, or is it just ego saying get the biggest and baddest out there and let's see how it goes? Well, let's logically look at this, and that way you can have an informed decision of when you really need, mechanically need, a higher force feedback base, or when you should just stick with what you got. All right, let's get into it. Alrighty, so let's get started. But before I totally get started, check out my link tree link that is in the description there. There you'll find various dealers to buy sim racing products. Some actually have some discounts on it. For instance, Apex Sim Racing, uh, where you can get your your uh, Sim Magic gear, which I'm talking about Sim Magic right now. You can get Moza, Cube Racing, D Box, several several others. Just check out their website. But also off the Apex products, you can get 5% off with my code, TJRSIM. And uh, yeah, and also there's some uh, codes for other, other dealers in the, in the link tree description. It's all listed out there. So check it out to help support the channel and get the gear that you love. All right, so let's really get into it. All right, so this may be more for entry level and intermediate sim racers out there to identify why your wheelbase may feel numb to you, which we call clipping. It means you're clipping in there. What does clipping mean? Let's figure out what clipping actually means. Clipping means that uh, when your wheel is feeling numb, you are basically beyond the limits of what the force feedback can put out from the game to your, to your rim, right? To your wheelbase itself. So how do you, how do you know you're clipping, right? Without even looking at a meter. Now, most major sim titles nowadays have a meter. It's usually horizontal or vertical, and it'll show you when you're clipping, meaning that you'll be a little meter gauge in there, and it'll be maxed out. Uh, ACC is a great example for it. AMS2, all of them, uh, most of them have it, right? Uh, when you're clipping, it'll go red usually in, in that zone. That lets you know that you're clipping. Well, clipping means that you've hit the limitations of the feedback that the game can give you through your through your wheelbase and then of course inherently going to your rim itself. So what you feel is that when it's starting to clip is you get a numb feeling. So you're loading up the tires through, through a long embankment and a curve and you're and uh, under this load, you're running out of granule feedback from the game to your wheelbase. And it feels numb, right? It feels numb when you're trying to push through this curve. It's all loaded up, it's feeling numb way way a lot more powerful rally really at that point and you're like well, i don't really feel nothing then all of a sudden you slide off the track right but you never felt that slip because you were in the clipping stage so you were at the past the max of what the wheelbase can deliver to you as a driver so how do you fix it well glad you asked all righty so i'm in ams2 here i'm gonna go ahead and hit drive and you can't see my mouse on the screen, but at the bottom left here, and actually, let me turn my audio down uh, quite a bit, like three. And uh, here at the bottom left of the screen, as you see me rotate my wheel, you see the bottom uh, corner there is going blue to the left. Now it's going blue to the right. Let me start my engine. Go ahead and take off. But as I turn, you see I'm turning right with that meter, right? Obviously, and then on screen display. But there to the right of that is a 51050. Don't ask me what the 51000 and then 50 mean, but the last dial on there is the actual indication of when you clip. So there's uh, six, six vertical lines there. Uh, the last, very last one is clipping. Now the bottom horizontal line you see it kind of jumping around. That's me feeling all the all the textures in the track, right? And so that's indicating those textures. Uh, when, when I hit big, you know, big rumble strips, you see how it just peaked up, right, really hard. 
but I never clipped in that. Now I have my clipping set uh, just right where it doesn't have any clipping, but just giving you some examples this is how you identify it. See how the horizontal line was bouncing around, indicating you know me uh, uh, clipping a more uh, harsh surface. Now let me go ahead and change my force feedback here. I got 52 right here as a gain. I have to remember this is where I like it. Let me go ahead and move it up to 100%. Now remember, in the software, I already had it set at 70% for the SimMagic Alpha U software. But you can see now that last line, the last vertical line went red. See it's going red right there? Now I'm clipping. Even when I hit these bumps, it doesn't matter, it's clipping, right? Now the clipping kind of settled back down. It, it goes off the screen eventually. But you can tell that I'm clipping, right? and I actually feel the force through the wheel quite strong, left to right, and that's just only using 70% of the 23 Newton meters available. Now, it doesn't really matter you know, what your Newton meters of your base is, because we're just trying to determine right now, do you have enough, and when you should move up to the next stage. Well, right now I'm clipping, so let's figure out how to get rid of that clipping. So like I explained already, we've identified now that we're clipping, and I'm here, and I'm gonna just drop it down to 90%, right? And I'll go back, drive around a little bit more, let that clipping that was there clear off, but you see it does. Now it clipped again on that curve. That curve was a little bit more high banking, hit the rumbles. Right here, see it's clipping hard right there through that constant radius curve. That's without even hitting any bumps, right? Which is a great, great indication of your overloading what the game can put out. And it feels, as you can see me on screen, jittering around. You, it doesn't feel great, right? So, now I like the way it felt going down the track. I liked all those details coming out down the track, but I don't like the severe clipping. So I'm gonna have to turn it back down again. Let's go somewhere, we know 52 is perfect, but let's go 75, something a little bit more drastic, 74. And see what we got here. Now, nothing clipping. I'll just turn left to right. A Little bit clipping right there, just going down the straight, just trying to yank the wheel around. You're clipping, right? Here's this high bank turn. Oops, clipping uh, through there as well. It's hard to look at the meter and drive straight too, but coming through this curve, heavy under braking. No clipping right there at that at that particular speed. Go up a little bit faster, try to make this curve. No clipping there. So you're like, that's pretty good. Although the wheel itself may be too heavy to you at this point. Even you're like, I wouldn't want to drive this for a long stint of time. I'll probably turn it down anyways. Well, you're seeing through some of these curves, that there is no clipping. So this could be a possible setting for you in this game uh, based off of this particular track, right? Uh, but you wanna set it for all of them at one time. So you pick your worst track. So here, no clipping going on, pretty good. Eventually we'll get some clipping going on. Nothing there. See where we can load it up here. There's a little bit of clipping right there. It barely clipped a little bit right there. A lot of clipping there without touching anything, just a little bit. That part of clipping is okay. Uh, it's very short lived, You're, you'll be okay with it. But if you wanna perfect it, see there's some fairly decent clipping right there, a little bit more than what it was a while ago. A little bit there too, trying to straighten out onto the front straight. Let's go down to this turn, hard on the brakes, rolling through it, load the tires up, they're slipping. There you go, pretty hard clipping at the bottom of that curve. So I was like, I really want to feel my wheel in a, in, in a nice definitive way when I'm going through there because you're generally trying to pass people, you're trying to hold your line, you want to be very consistent. So I'm like, that's not good enough. If I'm by myself, no problem. So then I'll, I'll go ahead and drop it down to something else, right? And you keep just doing this. I think you get the gist of it all, but you, uh, you just keep doing this until you eliminate the clipping altogether or at least at a spot where you can live with the clipping. Uh, maybe at, at one point where it just barely clips on a curb, you're like, ah, I can live with that. It's very short lived. It's not a crucial passing point usually through there. I, I, I can deal with it, right? Now I've obviously tested this on some other, other tracks as well. I would suggest picking the, the track that would give you the most damage as far as presenting clipping to you. Uh, this brand hatch is pretty good example here. It's very tough through the steering wheel here. There was a slight little bit of clipping going on there. Very little actually at that point. But this is why you want to drive in different situations. There had a little bit there when I was off track. And I already know that 
you know, the wheel feels a little bit too strong for my liking if I was gonna do an endurance race. So I'll go ahead and adjust it down more as well until I eliminate it. But for practicality, this would be a fine setting right now for the wheel. So let's just assume this is what we like, right? For you to see a little bit of clip in there through that high load curve, wasn't even going full out, but in a race I'd be going full out and uh, would have even more uh, load on the tires going through there. Same here, loading up the tires, not bad at all. So just a little bit of clipping here and there. But we're gonna say, I can live with that. That's barely clipping. That's actually fine, actually, in, in most, most cases. Now I'm like, okay, but the wheel's too damn strong still. So I'll go back to my software in the game itself. Now let me pull that up. All right, so we're back at the, uh, the Simpro Manager here to adjust it. Now we had it at 75% initially. Uh, I was thinking it was too much force through the wheel at the 62 or whatever percent it was in game a while ago. Uh, but I got rid of most of the clipping. I didn't get rid of all of the clipping, right? Now my setting at 52% gets rid of all the clipping and all the tracks uh, for the GT3 cars that I was that I was racing on, right? And that accounted for some of the more high bank tracks as well as, as some of these. So you have to spend some time on this, right? To get it right. Now, if you're just a casual player, it's probably not that big of a deal to you. If you're more of a serious sim racer, you're gonna to wanna to dial these in a little bit more. But still, it doesn't take more than 10 minutes of your time to get your force feedback set to eliminate your clipping and then adjust your overall force right here in the game. Uh, it's very quick to do. It's longer to explain what to do, but after you do it a couple times, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, I would suggest here when you actually get to your end game, especially you say with Sim, Sim Pro Manager, but most of them are the same. Turn off your dampening and your friction and mechanical inertia, and uh, in this case, feedback frequency as well. Uh, all the way down uh, to to nothing, right? To zero. That way you don't have any added force through what you would feel through your wheel. You just want raw force feedback coming through there. Smoothness, you can turn it down too. But after you got this, your wheel weight right to where you want it, uh, say, you know, uh, it was too heavy, I wanted to go down to 60, 65%, played in the game, that felt great. Then come back here and start adjusting your smoothing to smooth out your details of the track. Uh, maybe add, amplify some frequency with your feedback frequency. Maybe you want a little bit of friction in your wheel. You know, mess with those last. Uh, but get your force feedback right. And then, of course, now you can easily identify that if you were maxed out, uh, if you'd set your force feedback correctly in game, like we had at, say, 60-something percent we had, um, and the wheel's still too light for you, when you have it at 100% on your actual wheelbase itself, it's time to move up. It's time to, now you can justify that you need more of a uh, more high-end wheel and more uh, uh, higher Newton meter wheel. Now that doesn't even account for, you know, how these wheels have uh, interpolations and, and how they, the uh, frequency coming through, how well it's able to produce these low frequencies and amplify things and and how uh, granule feeling they are. That's all set aside. This is just uh, considering the Newton meters of force you need. So, uh, but yeah, I hope that helps you uh, in identifying it, uh, how to move up and when to move up, and then of course clipping. So if you have any questions, drop, uh, drop them in the link. I check my stuff uh, as often as I can. Sometimes I'm out of the country, but I do check them as, as pretty often. And, uh, and yeah. Um, hope this was helpful to you. See you next time on the track. I'm out.